Here we go again. Manchester United will head to Denmark today ahead of their Champions League clash against FC Copenhagen. United go into the game off the back of a late galvanizing 1-0 win over Fulham, but have been in this situation before and been unable to build upon it. Eric's side spot in Europe remains in peril, and they need to pick up another victory against FC Copenhagen to ensure they remain well-placed to qualify for the knockout stages. The Reds struggled against the Danes at Old Trafford, though, needing a late Harry Maguire header and a last-gasp penalty save from Andre Onana to ensure the first three points of the competition. Ten Hag will speak to the media today and will likely address yet more injury problems for his team. Harry Maguire suffered head and hand injuries in separate incidents at Craven Cottage, while Marcus Rashford didn't play in the game after failing a late fitness test. Meanwhile, when this season began, Eric Ten Hag would have had a pretty good idea of his strongest United team, and 10 of them started on the opening weekend of the Premier League season. At that point, it had felt like a pretty productive summer, and Ten Hag had the pieces he wanted to form his team. More depth could be added, but the additions should have allowed him to build this side more in his image. It was clear in preseason that the Dutchman wanted United to be more proactive in his second season, playing higher up the pitch and pressing with more intent. He had a new striker, the midfielder he wanted, and a transformative goalkeeper. On the other side, you can ask yourself that why is Antony misfiring so badly at Manchester United compared to Ajax? So, Dutch football journalist Marcel van de Kramp believes Antony looks a shadow of his former self at Manchester United and needs to get his confidence back. On the other side, a Fulham fan appeared to celebrate Manchester United captain Bruno Fernandes's last-minute winner on Saturday at Craven Cottage. Fernandez's goal sent the away end wild, but several spectators sat in the home section also appeared to celebrate. One fan who had a black and white scarf draped around his shoulders was seen pumping his fists after the ball hit the back of burned Leno's net. The supporter, who was only separated from the traveling fans by netting, was surrounded by several others who celebrated the Red Devils winner. Some applauded while others leapt for joy, despite being seated in the home end at Fulham. Again and again. It is confirmed that VAR referees not well trained. Ex-Premier League referee Jeff Winter told Betway VAR officials are not well trained after Manchester United had a goal controversially disallowed against Fulham. My refereeing days are over, thankfully. I look at things like a football fan. It's easy to claim you want to get rid of VR, and I'm not advocating that, but it needs improving. We've seen World Cups, Euros, and other European games where it seems like the other countries have it right. They may not be perfect, but it seems to be a lot better than what we've got. I'd like to see, and this is a personal thing, another look at offside rules. Goal line technology was something everybody was calling for, as people used to think it was easy to determine if a ball had gone in or not. But we found out that a ball being driven at 80 miles an hour makes it difficult for the naked eye to judge if it crossed the line by a millimeter. I'd like to see VAR used for things like Thierry Henry's handball, incidents where you can't blame the match officials. The players can be clever and the decision was on the blind side of the officials. It was an obvious error. All of the things in football are subjective and people are calling for consistency. I cannot think an incident is a penalty from one angle, but someone else looking from another can think differently. Whose decision do you take note of? More and more people are stating that referees need to be trusted more and we should let them get on with it. To use every angle when looking at an incident is like using a sledgehammer to smash a walnut. On the other side, Sabitzer puts blame for Man United woes on injuries. Former Man United star Marcel Sabitzer has put the blame for Man United's poor results on the club's injuries. He explained that the rhythm of the team had been disrupted by them. Sabitzer told The Athletic, Casemiro, Luke Shaw and Lisandro Martinez. They are leaders that provide structure and stability to the team. 
Eric Ten Hag comes with up very specific match plans and patterns of play. But if you have too many important players missing and too many changes as a result, things get lost between the tactics board and the pitch. The rhythm of players coming isn't right, processes aren't right. In the Premier League and Champions League, you need your best players available. Everything feels a little labored and uncertain now. They need their big guys to show up and change the course of the season, but I believe things can change quickly once they get important players back elsewhere. Rasmus Hoyland cooked. A horror stat regarding Manchester United ace Rasmus Hodgland has emerged on Sky Sports Monday Night Football. Liverpool heroes Daniel Sturridge and Jamie Carragher analyzed Hodgland's performances and opened with a damning statistic that places him 100th in the Premier League for shots taken per 90 minutes. The striker averages just 1.7 shots per 90, which is dwarfed by the attacker with the most shots. Darwin Nunez with 5.7 per 90. Sturridge defended the Norway international, saying that his low shot volume is partly caused by his team's struggles to make chances for him. The ex-England international also said, the presence of Marcus Rashford on the left wing limits the number of opportunities the 20-year-old receives because of his tendency to shoot often. Hodgelund ranks behind both Rashford and United captain Bruno Fernandes for shots taken despite being the focal point of the team. In addition, Manchester United legend Gary Neville has slammed Arsenal's statement against PGM All and described it as poor, as well as dangerous. He said that, I think the Arsenal statement is quite dangerous. I think all clubs have signed up to a new behavioral charter at the start of the season. I'm not saying that referees shouldn't be put under pressure and Michael Arteta or other managers shouldn't feel aggrieved at the end of matches. What I am saying is that the clubs themselves should definitely behave better in these circumstances. On the other side, Rashford's five-word response to malicious rumors he could leave United. Marcus Rashford has delivered a five-word social media comment hitting back at a United fan channel who were debating whether he has a future at the club. The striker has not had a fruitful season up to this point, scoring just one club goal, having also been admonished by boss Eric Ten Hag for attending a party hours after the Derby defeat to Manchester City eight days ago. He was left out of the squad for Saturday's triumph over Fulham, having picked up a knock in training and subsequently failing a late fitness test. Rashford netted a career-high 30 goals last term and secured a new five-year deal in July.